testing, rolling, testing, one, two, and rolling. This is probably one of the most anticipated reviews of 2022. <laughs> this is the Hoka Speedgoat 5, a shoe that has come a long way since its abysmal first offering. After the popularity and success of the Speedgoat 4, and knowing that Hoka's done away with their stellar Speedgoat Evo, I had high hopes and heavy concerns that the Speedgoat 5 would be a drastic change to a model that had clawed its way back to be an ultimate performer. Well, I'm happy to report that the Speedgoat 5 brings the goods and delivers what Speedgoat fans were hoping for, familiarity and advancement. The Speedgoat 5, coming in a half ounce lighter than its predecessor, features an entirely new jacquard mesh upper that brings the weight down and durability up, a new yet familiar EVA midsole cushion stack, that delicious grippy Vibra make a grip outsole and a slightly new layout, a new stretchy vamp, lighter laces, readjusted tongue shape and thinner gusset, that Hoka Swallowtail heel counter, less welded overlays, and a soft, springy ride that Speedgoat fans will feel right at home in while enjoying hours of trail fun. All that being said, I think the Speedgoat 5 does have a couple of quirks that you need to know about. We'll cover all of it in today's review. Let's dive in. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. Today, we're going to get right into this thing. We're reviewing a shoe from Hoka. It is the Speedgoat 5. Seriously, one of the most anticipated trail shoes probably of 2022. I love the Speedgoat 4s. I really love the Speedgoat Evos. So this was probably the most anticipated shoe in quarter one, two of 2022. And uh, it's in my hands. It's been on my feet. I have tons of miles in it. I wanted to take my sweet ass time with it just because I wanted to make sure that all my thoughts were correct and together. Uh, so that is what today's review is going to be about. Talking about my experiences, my likes, my dislikes, all that good stuff. Two things before we dive into the review. The Tiger Claw Vert Challenge registration is open now. There is a link in the description. Uh, it's our vert based challenge that starts in mid-April. We'd love to have you join us. Second, the FTC requires that I let you know that these shoes were provided for review by Hoka. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative. I'm not financially compensated for anything that I say in this review. And all opinions are my own. No one has to approve this review. You're the first to see it. With that out of the way, let's start talking about the things I like and dislike about the Hoka Speedgoat 5, starting as always with the things that I like. Mm. The same, but better. And I think this is that one like that will probably allow many of you to sort of breathe a sigh of relief. I think the Speedgoat 5 brings what's familiar from the Speedgoat 4, brings some of the advancements that the Speedgoat Evo was known for, and puts them together into this package. It's almost like a little Speedgoat 4 and a little Speedgoat Evo got together and made a little Speedgoat baby. Uh, it has some of the features from both, but it's still a familiar shoe. So if you're used to those shoes or you liked either of those shoes for whatever reason, feels like they purposefully mushed those two shoes together into this one great package. So it kind of does a little bit of everything that they did uh, in one package versus two. This new upper, I was resistant at first because I, I, I didn't trust that the Jackard upper would really hold up. We saw it in the Tecton X. It's actually doing pretty well in that shoe as well. But here in the Speedgoat 5, I was worried it wasn't going to hold up as well as the Matrix fabric upper from the Speedgoat Evo. Uh, and I never really had issues with the Speedgoat 4 upper, but I know many people that did. It just sort of prematurely wore through. Uh, so I, I, I have my initial concerns with the Jackard upper. However, it's pretty comfortable and it's lightweight and it's holding up much better than I anticipated. So I'm gonna give them a big thumbs up here. I also wanna to touch on some of those carryovers from the Speedgoat Evo that I really commend here in the upper. That is the stretchy vamp across the forefoot. It allows for a more accommodating fit through there and that thinner tongue, that redesigned tongue and the thinner gusset that goes along the side of the tongue. So you're gonna have a bit more volume in the shoe and the upper sort of allows your foot to fill that void versus trying to conform your foot in any specific way. It's still a narrow shoe, I'll get to that here in a bit, but the upper is improved, which I was worried about initially, and I'm happy to report it's A-OK. -okay. The grip, uh, Vibram Mega Grip, always a big fan of this stuff. I think it does really well. They kind of redesigned things a little bit here on the outsole, not by much, but repositioned things, added a little bit more along the heel for durability and some across the toe grip. It always holds up really well for me. I love the grip that it provides in all sorts of conditions and environments. I had a pretty muddy trail run today, used these shoes, held up just fine. Really why this is a perk, especially in the fifth version of this shoe, is because that these lugs, despite being you know big and kind of clunky, this shoe still runs on all types of surfaces well and that outsole doesn't get in the way, it still provides you with grip. So if you're talking gravel or even concrete surfaces, if you have like road connections between house and trail, 
the shoe still holds up really well and provides you with plenty of the grip that you need. And finally, midsole. Um, they're advertising a new midsole, but I'll say it feels very similar to the previous version, Speedgoat 4, and really similar to the Speedgoat Evo, which is kind of a surprise. Uh, it provides you with plenty of bounce and cushioning underfoot. It gets you that ground feel that you need, especially out of a max cushion shoe, but it also has that springiness that's super fun and enjoyable from Hoka shoes. As you begin to wear the shoe in, that does sort of flatten out and widen out, which gets you extra balance, and the shoe doesn't feel like it's wearing through prematurely. The midsole gets a thumbs up for me. So far, loving it. That being said, it's not all Spider-Man memes and Love is Blind reunions. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Speedgoat 5. Sorry, let's get to those now. Fit. So the Speed Goats are notorious for being narrow. That doesn't change in the Speed Goat 5. It's a narrow shoe, as I mentioned earlier. But really where this shoe kind of runs into issue is also with this new upper. As much as I like it, and I think it's super comfortable, and I think it's a great upper for this shoe, it stretches out. After 30 or 40 miles in the shoe, I noticed that the upper was really beginning to stretch out. It does provide you with more volume because of that, but unfortunately with that narrowness and the low ceiling height, the fabric doesn't really have anywhere to go. I ended up having to really lace this tightly down the midfoot, which results in some interesting downhill. Having to stop, pull off to the side and retie the shoe just to make sure that I got it fit on my foot right. It's a problem that I never had in a speed goat before. I never really had to readjust the shoe for being too loose. Uh, that is what I'm running into with this upper, is that it stretches out. The poor fit being the repercussion of an upper that does stretch out and stays stretched out. Normally when this sort of thing happens in a shoe, I'd almost recommend going down a half size, but in this case, I don't, because I think that's gonna ultimately adjust the length of the last, and you don't want your toes rubbing here along the toe box because it's so narrow. So you just kind of have to deal with it. Unfortunately for me, if this upper stretches any more, which I doubt it will, I have about 70 or 80 miles in the shoe, but if it does, I'm not going to have anywhere else to go tightening those laces. It's going to be as tight as it goes. So I will have to size down and I'm worried about that. And the Swallowtail. Hoka has been doing this on most of their road shoes lately. They're incorporating it now into trail shoes. I get why they do that. Relieve some pressure off the Achilles tendon. Makes sense. Also, it works when getting your foot into the shoe. You're not having to deal with any of those, you know, pull tabs or anything. Try to get your heel in there without forcing the heel counter down. But where this has become a problem for me is letting debris into the shoe. It's surprising to me how much I noticed it happening in the shoe. I felt like, oh man, I must have laced them up wrong or something. But the reality is dirt and small pebbles and debris can get into that heel, especially on dusty or dirty descents. Uh, the dirt just wants to go in there. It's like a vacuum, just sucking it up. That sucks, especially in a race where you might have to take your shoes off and dump it out because the little pebbles are gonna cause blister issues and you know how it goes. And quick note, getting a good heel lock around the ankle collar, specifically with this swallowtail ankle thing, is a bit more challenging than the previous versions. I didn't run into too many issues with it, especially getting used to the shoe, but you'll notice that it doesn't have quite a grip around your ankle as the previous versions did, but that, is it for my dislikes. So let's get more specific in our breakdown where we talk about the build quality, comfort, fit, price, and looks. Starting with build quality, I think the shoe is built much better than anticipated. The materials they're using are great. I love Vibra Mega Grip. I think this jacket upper is holding up better than I thought, though stretchy. The midsole, being new, I'm actually surprised. It feels very similar to the previous. Putting everything together, you have a lighter shoe, a fast shoe, a bouncy shoe, which ultimately leads to comfort being comfortable. I think this shoe is a really great trail performer that's going to handle all sorts of situations, trails, environments, everything you can throw at it. Uh, as far as fit is concerned, the biggest issue, again, is that upper stretching. If you're one to dislike a narrow shoe, perhaps the stretching upper will provide you more relief. The last and platform of the shoe is unchanged. It's really that upper stretching out that's going to make it more difficult to get that precision fit that the Speed Goats have sort of been known for, especially the Speed Goat Evo. Price at $155, I I think the Speedgoat 5 is a bit on the steep end as far as price is concerned. A lot of Hoka's tend to be leaning that direction. I wish it was $10, $20 cheaper than that uh, because I do think this is a really good shoe for everybody. I hate that a price could alienate a lot of people. Uh, at 155 bucks, it does tilt the scales at the more expensive end of things. And finally, looks. I don't mind it. I actually like the looks of the Speedgoat. I think the other color version of this is also just as enticing. The Jackard upper, the new Hoka line for 2022, I'm like, it looks like tiger stripes or skeleton bones or whatever is going on here. Um, I don't mind it in this shoe, but I'm getting super nitpicky on it. And uh, it's not my favorite, but it doesn't totally turn me off. Bringing us ultimately to our conclusion. If you like the Speedgoat 4, 
you'll like the Speedgoat 5. If you like the Speedgoat Evo, you'll like the Speedgoat 5. I think it is a great update to a shoe that was already very popular, and I think it will appease a lot of people, especially me, who was concerned that the new version would be drastically different, changed so much that it's no longer the shoe that we began to love. And from a shoe that started in version one as kind of a trash pile and has eventually evolved into this, I am happy that we're here versus in a completely another direction that would have ultimately hurt this shoe's lineage. So Carl Meltzer, here we are years after version one. I tilt my hat to you, my friend, for eventually getting the shoe to where it is today, which clearly is a great shoe. Which brings me to my final criteria. Is the Speedgoat 5 a buy, try, or a why? I am a fan, it is a buy. And this is a buy for anyone who's running anything from a vertical kilometer to a hundred mile endurance event, anything in between. If you're just getting into trail running and you're thinking about running ultras or running mountains or any of that kind of stuff, the shoe adapts to environments, conditions, and to runners quite well. So those of you who like to go fast, you'll feel at home. And those of you who like to go nice and slow in the mountains, I think you will also find a comfortable place in the Speedgoat 5. That is my review. If you would like to find out more information or get a pair of the Speedgo 5s for yourself, I have a link in the description. It takes you to Running Warehouse. It costs you nothing, but it does help the channel out. Consider that. Does the Speedgo 5 entice you? Do you have any additional questions or have you been running in the Speedgo 5 yourself? In the comments of this video, of course, let us know. And finally, if you like this review, like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video is uploaded or we go live, which we do every single day with our Patreon crew. We call them the GR crew. Head on over to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers get access to some really fun perks, including discount codes to Running Warehouse. You can get discounts on shoes, gear, watches, all that good stuff. And finally, register for Tiger Claw Virtual. It's our vert challenge coming up in a month. We would love to have you join us. Links also in the description. That is it, everybody. We hope you are getting out there training hard, racing harder, and parting the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye -bye.